Hey there, what's up everybody? This is your nutritionist on the go, Kamal Deep Singh Ojla from Erudite Nutrition. This is going to be the first video in which we are going to talk about pathophysiology and the actual treatment and the dietary intervention of peptic ulcers. So this is going to be the first video in this playlist which will be followed by uh, after peptic ulcers in which we are going to discuss about gastric ulcers as well as duodenal ulcers. In the next phase of this playlist we are going to talk about pathophysiology and dietary management and treatment of esophageal ulcers okay which uh, is also combined with the topic of GERD which is known as gastroesophageal reflux disease. In the third part, in the third phase of this playlist, you will find the next video which is related with rectal ulcers. That video will also be split into two parts. We are going to talk about the pathophysiology of rectal ulcers along with that covering irritable bowel syndrome and irritable bowel disease along with ulcerative colitis. So if you are suffering from any types of GI ulcers, this playlist is going to be very very helpful and important for you as you always know erudite nutrition provides you the best most scientific and experienced advice which is going to help you recover from your ailment so that you can live a stress-free medication free and a healthy lifestyle so for watching the whole video stay tuned Welcome back guys we are here to talk about peptic ulcers so peptic ulcers will be classified into two different stages we will be discussing as we change the format of videos on our channel so from this playlist we might be changing our format into more of a presentation based videos so these are educational videos related with your healthcare and now they are going to be more interactive with the help of presentations that I will be showing you on the screen right now and we will continue with our treatment and with our guidance from there on. Since this is the first video in which we are changing the format of our channel, do suggest any changes that you liked or you disliked in the comment section. Do not forget to give back your feedback. That is very important for me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel till now, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my channel and follow all my videos previously. You can click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of the latest information that I post on my channel. You can also come along and follow me on Facebook and you can also follow me on Instagram. So let's begin our presentation now. So guys, let's switch on to our presentation mode and let's start. Okay, so in this video, we will be covering two basic parts. Okay, both of them uh, fall under the category of peptic ulcers. Okay, and which are classified into gastric ulcers and duodenal ulcers. So this presentation is made and being presented by your very own nutritionist on the go, Kamal Deep Singh Ochla. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. So before talking about uh, ulcers, let's first of all let's first of all uh, start with what is gastritis. Okay, so in gastritis, uh, see you can see a picture of a stomach over here. Okay, usually what happens is our bodies have a very strong stomach acid okay which is helpful in breaking down of food turning our food into chyme from where the proteins will be disassociated into amino acids carbs will be broken down into simpler sugars and fats are broken down into smaller molecules so that the body can process the complex nature of our diet okay so to protect our own body from that gastric acid a lining of mucus is covered is covering our inner side of the stomach so this gastric mucosa okay this is going to provide uh, a, this is going to provide a protective layer for our stomach so that our own stomach acid does not dissolve our stomach okay so it is for the beneficial as for the, for the benefit of our stomach lining but sometimes what happens is due to various inflammatory factors this stomach lining can be irritated okay so if the stomach lining is irritated we can have gastritis which is the initial form of any ulcer 
So gastritis uh, can be of some particular type. So type 1 gastritis is, is, uh, is caused when our own immune system uh, is going to attack the parietal cells of our stomach. So our own immune system is attacking the lining, see the inner lining of the stomach. I hope you can easily distinguish it. This inner lining of our stomach, which is the protective gastric mucosa layer, is being irritated, is being attacked by our own immune system. Uh, it can cause uh, some symptoms it can increase your risk of getting vitamin and mineral deficiencies can also be converted into anemia or cancer the second type is the most common one okay this type of gastritis is caused by a gram negative bacteria that is called helicobacter pylori in short we write it as h pylori this bacteria is present in majority of the population but in a healthy person this bacteria usually stays in its dormant state it does not activate it does not do any activity but sometimes what happens is if our stomach acids get weak then we can have issues with the overgrowth of helicobacter pylori so this was found in uh, 1982 okay in a patient and further was uh, examined by then doctors so in 80 percent of the population it is asymptomatic and about 50% of the population, more than 50% of the population actually carry this uh, H. pylori bacterial strain in our gut. So in the total population, there is a 10 to 20% chances of getting gastritis and 1 or 2% have a chance of getting a stomach cancer. So what does this H. pylori do? See, coming back uh, a couple of slides, this is the structure of H. pylori. This is the main body part and this is the flagella part. So these tentacles, these tentacles that we are seeing, these are called uh, flagella. So these tentacles, basically what they do is they burrow down, okay? They dug down deep into the cell surface, okay? And they get connected in the, they get embedded in the cells. So they start penetrating the lining of our stomach okay so these flagella actually burrow in the mucous membrane okay now when the mucus layer is damaged the stomach acid will start reaching the epithelial cells the mucus layer which was till now protecting our stomach is now being disturbed so the stomach acid that is being produced can now harm our own stomach because there is a breakage there is a breakage in the defense line produced by the mucus so it also breaks down uh, urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide okay so it produces ureases it also produces some proteases and uh, cyto uh, cytotoxin A's okay and other phospholipids which also damage the epithelial layer the epithelial layer is the layer below okay or the layer next to the mucosal layer a lot will be cleared in this particular diagram so this is uh, a H. pylori bacteria okay it is going to somewhere start infection and uh, it is going to accumulate it's going to aggregate in number and then it will start sticking with the surface of our stomach so it starts with the irritation of gastric mucosa the layer that we can see over here so it starts irritating this surface this irritation actually creates an inflammatory response okay so first step is irritation okay the second step is the inflammatory response that is created by our own body. Then we will experience a sort of swelling that we usually also see if any external irritant touches our skin. So imagine an external irritant pouring on your hand and then your skin on your hand starts to inflame. The same mechanism is happening inside, inside your body. So the systematic inflammation will keep on increasing. And now, since the mucus layer has been disturbed, the stomach acid is going to further wash into or gush into your own cells, damaging your own cells. After the inflammation, the stomach acid is also start going to harm our stomach lining. So this gastritis can happen to a certain part of the stomach or to a major part or major areas or covering a lot of areas of our stomach. The third type of gastritis can be caused by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so mostly painkillers. Okay, some people are consuming a lot of painkillers. They can also start uh, 
causing gastritis. So these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can actually also harm the inner lining of our mucus. See, once again, let me remind you before we have discussed, until unless your stomach has no prior issues, you have a strong stomach acid, H. pylori bacteria will stay in check. But as soon as uh, your mucous membrane starts getting irritated or there is a sign of inflammation uh, due to this non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, this H. pylori bacteria will increase. Why? Because it starts decreasing the acidity of your stomach acid. Okay. Now your stomach acids are no more powerful. Even, even in the second case, uh, when we see that earlier state signs of gastric inflammation happens, our stomach acids start getting weak. So in a weak stomach acid, the H. pylori bacteria will actually grow more uh, significantly. So some other causes are like alcohol or over secretion of uh, bile in, uh, in, the, in the intestinal lining. So this can cause lining erosion and bleeding. Okay, these can cause uh, these drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen. These can also cause gastritis. So the gastritis, again, let's get a little back. Gastritis can be caused by autoimmune diseases or by helicobacter pylori or by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, alcohol or some other such medicines. Okay, so what are the symptoms? What is going to happen if you're suffering from gastritis? So you will be feeling a burning sensation in your middle area in your abdomen there will be a burning sensation uh, you can also feel this burning sensation in your chest and belly button areas dull pain in stomach you will experience weight loss because you are not able to properly digest your food or eat enough food because it irritates you every time you eat food so your desire to eat food due to the pain is decreased you lose your appetite you can also uh, have nausea and vomiting bloating you feel very full very easily okay burping or acid reflux so all these ca uh, causes all these symptoms can be related with gastritis apart from that you can have heart burns okay which is a burning chest sensation right in the epigastric region or towards the center close to your heart sometimes or even often uh, you know mixed up with cardiac health issues uh, due to the weakening of stomach acids you are not going to uh, enough you're not going to break down your food enough so it will cause indigestion uh, leading to weight loss and you will also start feeling bloated and due to the weakness or due to the malnourishment caused by gastritis you can also face symptoms like anemia uh, we are not going to discuss these dark and tarry stools over here we will discuss it in the further slides